Hi everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be looking at a couple of cameras used for solar imaging. I have my standard camera which is the QHY5III174 using the 174 sensor and I have the Player One Apollo M Mini camera which uses the uh, IMX429 sensor. I had two objectives. First, I wanted to see which camera is better, and second, I wanted to see which one really matches my telescope and gives me the best results. I'm using the Lunt 100MT. I should also note that while I'm looking at these specifically for solar imaging, they're great cameras for planetary imaging, for looking at the moon, and for capturing ISS transits. I used to use a ZWO ASI 174 for solar imaging, and it's a great camera but I switched to the QHY version of the same sensor. And the reason is that QHY enables some features in the sensor that ZWO does not. For example, offset control. Offset control allows you to get better contrast between umbra and prenumbra in a sunspot, and you can control the general blackness of a sunspot. So things like that make it a little bit better to use the QHY version than the ZWO in my experience. I should also note that the Apollo mini camera I'm comparing to also supports offset control. Let's get into it. With astronomy cameras in solar imaging applications, larger pixel sizes are better suited to longer focal lengths. This is why the Player One company recommends their Apollo M Max camera with its 9 micron pixel size for quark applications. The quark has a built-in 4.2x Barlow creating very long focal lengths with an average telescope. In theory, the 4.5 micron pixel size of the Apollo Mini should be a better match for my F7 Lunt 100MT than the 5.86 micron pixel size in my QHY 174. Let's find out. In comparing specifications, several things stand out. The sensor size is larger on the 174, which is why I can get the full sun or moon with it, but not with the Apollo M Mini. For simplicity going forward, I'll just refer to the two cameras as the 174 and the Mini. Perhaps the most important criteria in specifying a camera meant for solar include pixel size, frame rate, full well capacity, and whether it's a rolling or a global shutter. Specs on the two cameras are similar, except the 174 can capture more frames per second and has a deeper full well capacity. However, I found in the field that while the 174 did capture at a faster rate, it was not significantly faster in real use. A deeper full well means you get a higher dynamic range. My initial impressions on the Apollo Mini is it has nice packaging. I really like the built-in tilt adjust to minimize Newton rings. It has a cooler option which I did not buy. I was a bit concerned about vibration impact on the image. The sensor size is slightly too small to fit the entire solar disk in a field of view with the F7-100 from Lunt. This means you need to make a mosaic to capture a full disk, which is twice the work versus the 174. I wanted to see how it performed, how both cameras performed in comparison, at the native F7 focal length and also with my Teleview PowerMate 2.5x, which takes it to a uh, focal ratio of 17.5. I purchased the camera from myself and I compared back to back against the QHY 174. I tested on seven different dates to average out differences in seeing conditions. I tried to adjust the exposure and the gain to be similar as possible as well as the uh, region of interest, the field of view. I tried both full field of views and smaller field of views which allows you to capture at higher rates. I also did my stacking the same way and I adjusted my IMPPG so that I would get similar results. You can see how to do both of those in my other tutorials on solar imaging. I found that using a 1.5x drizzle in AutoStacker reduced the fine pixelation in my final images, but it does also triple the processing time. One really nice feature on the Apollo Mini 
is the built-in sensor tilt. So this plate here has little screws, hex screws. You can loosen screws on any of these sides you want and then tilt it to eliminate Newton ring issues on observations. I found with my 174 that I have a separate tilter, but frankly, it's a pain to use and set up, and so I never use it, even though I do have it. It's much easier and faster with the Apollo Mini to eliminate Newton rings than with the other cameras. So that's a point in its favor. Here are some example images from my various test dates. I'll allow you to judge for yourself which provides the more pleasing picture. So after all that, what are my conclusions? Performance in average seeing is similar with both cameras. Depending upon the seeing, one camera might slightly outperform the other. What I like about the Apollo Player One M Mini, built-in tilt adjust for Newton rings. It's built to withstand heat from the sun more than the QHY-174 although I did not have conditions to test this. Its performance on the photosphere appears generally better than the 174, and it provides a great value for the dollar. What I like about the QHY5174, it has a much faster frame rate capture for the same exposure and ROI. It's less bulky, but that's a trivial point. It allows me to get a full disc visible at f7 100 millimeter telescope which avoids the need to do a mosaic which more than doubles your capture and processing time and its performance in excellent seeing appears superior so what will i use going forward i'm going to use the mini camera for photosphere sunspot close-ups and on the chromosphere looking at individual features on the solar disk if seeing is average I'll use the 174 for full disk imaging of either the photosphere or the chromosphere, for close-ups of surface details when seeing is excellent, and for ISS capture, that's the International Space Station, where a high capture rate is especially important. I should note that these conclusions may not apply to your setup. For example, with an 80 millimeter or less aperture at f7, the Apollo should provide a full disk image. And if you're using a quark, the 9 micron Apollo M Max might be a better fit. 
Hope this was helpful and look forward to seeing your comments.